Uh, thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, we are very, very pleased to have you with us. Uh, welcome to our uh, to our Spotlighting an Author event with uh, Dr. Ali Mir Sipasi. Uh, today we will be discussing his new book, The Discovery of Iran, Taghi Arani, A Radical Cosmopolitan. First, I would like to take a minute to explain what the Iran 1400 Project is for those who may not know. Uh, the goal of the Iran 1400 Project is to encourage positive dialogue dialogue about Iran, productive dialogue about Iran, its past, its present, and its future. And with this conversation, we encourage doubting rather than posturing, um, rather than, sorry, we encourage constructive uh, conversation rather than shouting and posturing. And we hope to make a very positive and constructive contribution to the current uh, conversations that are happening about Iran. And we hope to, in a way, spotlight those who are, um, spotlight Iranians themselves to see what it is that they would like for their country and what they have, uh, what, what they hope for, for a future uh, for Iran. With that, uh, I'd like to introduce our distinguished guest, Dr. Ali Mir Sepasi. Uh, Ali Mir Sipasi is Albert Gallatin Research Excellence Professor of Middle Eastern and Islamic Studies at New York University. He is Director of Hagop Kevorkian Center for Near Eastern Studies and also Director of Iranian Studies Initiative at NYU. Uh, before the book that we're discussing today, uh, his most recent book was Iran's Quiet Revolution, uh, The Downfall of the Pahlavi State, which was published in 2019. Uh, we're incredibly excited to have him here today, and uh, we'll be starting with some remarks on behalf of the advisory board with Tabby. Dr. Mir Safasi, on behalf of the advisory board and the team, at Iran 1400 Project, we thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us today. Uh, as was said by Sydney, the Iran 1400 Project's mission is to foster a greater understanding of Iran's history during the past century in order to promote an informed conversation about Iran's future. We're honored to have you with us today to share your research and insights on Iranian experience. Welcome again, sir, and back to you, Sydney. Thank you, Tabby. Uh, before we get into Dr. Mir Sipasi's presentation, uh, I just wanted to explain the format real quickly. So Dr. Mir Sipasi will present his work for around 30 minutes uh, with his presentation. And then after that, we will go into another 30 minutes or so for uh, a Q&A session. And you can ask that those Q&A questions in uh, the chat at Zoom or the Q&A section of Zoom. You can also email those questions to media at iran1400.org. And with that, we'll begin uh, the presentation. Dr. Mir Sipasi, let me share my screen uh, with the PowerPoint and then we can begin. Let me back it up to, uh, let's see. There's that, okay but I need to get on the right slide. Let's... Can y'all see the PowerPoint? I think so. Yes, that's the... Okay. Okay. Uh... Um, thank you so much, Tabby and, and Sydney. And um, thank you, thank all of you who have joined us for this um, book discussion. Um, I am grateful to Iran 1400 Project and all my friends and their colleagues who have made, who have invited me, have given me the opportunity to discuss my book and, uh, and have organized this, um, this event. 
Um, as it was said, I will present a, a brief outline of my book, but I am more than happy to stay and discuss um, any questions, and particularly if you want to, um, I would be happy to present various aspects of what I, um, I have in the book in greater details. Uh, in some respect, uh, this book offers a counter historical narrative to existing scholarly work about history of Iran. And for this reason, details do matter. Unfortunately, we don't have, um, we don't have uh, the time for me to get into details. So consider my presentation as outline of the book, but as I said, I am happy to um, go into details uh, during the question and answer. Shall we go to the next uh, slide? Um, this is the outline of, of the book. As you will see, there is a extensive discussion of um, what we usually call Iran um, during the interwar period. Um, and there are detailed discussion of Tari Arani's writings. Um, Tari Arani is known as perhaps the pioneering radical Marxist intellectual in Iran. But uh, and some may be surprised that I have focused on Tari Arani's writings on Persian language, but in fact, most of his writings, apart from writings on, on the sciences, which I will explain later, Tari Arani mainly wrote about Persian language. And uh, the, um, his discussion of Persian language was, was the center of his idea of uh, what I call care of the nation, or we may generically want to call Iranian, um, Iranian nationalism. Shall we go to the next um, slide? Okay, so what, um, what I would like to briefly discuss here is, um, is to explain why I call my book a sort of counter narrative to existing historiography of Iran. Um, um, two, um, important points. One is that um, for most historians of Iran, and this includes some of the most prominent and well-known historians of modern Iran, um, there isn't such a thing called interwar period as a distinct uh, historical moment in, Iran in modern Iranian history. Uh, the interwar period is usually um, treated or write about uh, partly as the end of Mashrute's movement and revolution and decline of Mashrute. And part of this period is usually considered as beginning of the rise of Reza Shah's rule. Um, uh, I am in this book, I'm challenging this. Um, um, my argument is that um, um, during this period, and for just naming some dates, I, I personally, in my book, I consider the interwar um, uh, 19, 1919 to uh, 1936, 35. But uh, this, you know, in historical um, works, uh, uh, you don't come up with a very precise times. Um, uh, World War I started in, in 1914. And in some respect, one may want to argue that um, 
that um, 18 or 19 are important. Some have argued 1921 is important, um, but this is the period. My argument, my main argument for why we should consider the interwar period a distinct historical um, um, moment in Iranian history is that some of the most important events, ideas, and individuals who influenced Iranian, uh, certainly influenced 20th century Iran, um, either originate from this period or the events actually did happen in that period. And these are uh, national and international events and figures and ideas. And um, it is, of, of, of course, a very unfortunate um, assumption that it now seems to be the dominant um, view of um, historians of Iran that not to recognize this period as a distinct period. Um, um, I will, if we have time, I will come back, um, uh, come back to this. Of course, two war, two wars happened. I, um, well, let me go more systematically, um, and maybe in an outline um, um, fashion, I tell you what, what is my own argument? Why? This is a distinct episode in Iranian history. Um, first of all, as a result of the World War I, Iranian state basically collapsed. Uh, I think there is consensus by all historians of Iran to, to just name uh, Yerwan Abrahamian um, um, in his book, um, discusses in some details on why um, at least the Iranian state became a failed state, but there are other evidence that, um, that, um, th that the, the future of Iran as a sovereign state was, not, was in question in this period. Uh, and of course, Iran was occupied by, by um, by the, by, the, by the Russians and by the British and by the Ottomans and also Germans had some um, uh, uh, plans for Iran and, and a very important issue which I will discuss shortly was that a new mob movement from the Ottoman Empire, what is usually referred to as the new Ottomans, these are not the, the Ataturks folks. These were modernist Ottomans who did not want to um, uh, create a new Turkish Republic um, um, as Ataturk and his um, colleagues actually intended to do and did, but, but uh, they were thinking of recreating the uh, Ottoman Empire as an empire, but modern empire. And they, um, they made the argument that Iran, the, the whole history of Iran is fake, is, is constructed. And, and this is basically uh, where the Turks live and it, what we now call Iran, they claim should be part of this new Ottoman empire. This period is also a period of transition from the Rajar period to Pahlavi period. It's, it's of, of course extremely important. And it is important, particularly from my point of view, I am mainly an intellectual historian. And, um, and so my interest is in exchange of ideas, debates, particularly when it comes to, um, to political and social theory. And from this point of view, the debate in Majlis, in fourth and fifth Majlis, these are, this is when the debate on whether the, um, the, the, uh, the deputies should vote to get rid of the Pahlavi, uh, sorry, Rajar 
dynasty and installed as a Shah and beginning of the Pahlavi dynasty. Those debates from both sides by those who opposed the creation of Pahlavi dynasty and those who were for it. Um, I feel that even today, as we stand on um, here um, on April 8 of 22, um, some of the most sophisticated, interesting, and thoughtful um, political debates on democracy, state building, and relationship between citizens and state um, took place in fourth and fifth majlis. Um, we don't have time for me to, um, to get into details, but um, but this also happened during what we call the um, interval. Another point, which is a major, major point from my perspective is that what we call the idea of Iranian nation state or nationalism, for lack of time, I'm just, I use these terms interchangeably, but if you want, I would be happy to discuss them later. Uh, the whole idea of modern Iran actually, um, in, in contrast to popular belief, did not happen in, uh, during the uh, Mashrute, during the constitutional movement and revolution. Um, the constitutionalists were mainly concerned with rule of law, very important matter, but they were, and they were also very much interested in this sort of challenge of modernity to tradition, but nation making, um, um, starting the state from scratch and thinking about it, or thinking about the idea of Iran um, uh, for the first time and in a meaningful and serious way happened um, in this period. Uh, beginning in um, 1919 with um, a group of Iranians, Iranian intellectuals and politicians based in Berlin. Um, so this is for Iran uh, 1400 projects. Uh, some interesting things have has happened by, by uh, Iranians outside of Iran. Um, uh, and this is what um, mainly I will discuss today is that the origin of Iranian nationalism goes back to this period of time and a very vibrant and very rather very sophisticated discussion of Iranian history and, and, and certainly future course of Iranian nation happened in this period. And, and when I say a vibrant discussion, we had conservatives and radicals and everything in between uh, discussing more or less same or similar, um, similar ideas. Um, that also included um, for sometimes um, those who were part of uh, early first Pahlavi and those who oppose uh, Reza Shah. Um, unfortunately, this whole um, important, um, um, I would say vital discussion on the idea of Iran was stopped in um, 1935 when the state decided that um, this, the debate getting out of hand and basically, um, um, uh, Reza Shah and a few uh, people around him decided that um, that the state would um, uh, formulate and um, and uh, define Iran the idea of Iran or Iranian nationalism, which they did, and the um, uh, the important um, um, uh, event. Um, that ended this discussion is um, is changing of name or uh, 
a non-Persian name of, of Iran from Persia to Iran. The, it was the, the letter that the um, foreign minister of Iran sent to all foreign embassies and foreign ministries and asked them uh, that from today in, um, I, I believe it was March of, um, um, uh, of uh, 1935, everyone should call Iran, well, Persia, Iran. Um, um, I, the first chapter of my book is about this, and this is very important discussion, but I don't have time to go um, in, 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 into this. So uh, this is briefly uh, stating my argument uh, for why this period is so important. Uh, as a background information and sort of defense of more orthodox historiography of Iran is that this is also a very um, uh, trying times for Iran, the intervals, that Iran was occupied twice. Uh, as I said, Iranian state collapsed. This is the time of famine and pandemic. Um, you know, there are various statistics but um, um, from one third to half of the population, some uh, historians claim died because of this. And Iran was in a extremely poor economic conditions. So it's sort of easy to just dismiss this uh, top period because politically and economically, at least speaking, um, there wasn't much uh, uh, important things going on. But, as an intellectual historian, my argument is that, um, in fact, it is during crisis. It is when the whole uh, idea of Iran and sovereignty of Iran as a nation state is questioned that important ideas emerges. Can we go to the next? Um, 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 so, um, um, so what I have decided to do, although I don't know how much time I have to do this, but not to go into a detailed discussion of the period, but just focused on Tari Arani's uh, contribution in this period of time. And I wanna go um, uh, through this very quickly. Arani was born in 1902 in Tabriz. Um, and um, after he finished primary school, his family, they moved to Tehran. He graduated from Darul Funun and went to, um, to, um, to medical school, a particular medical school in Tehran, but he did not finish and, um, and he uh, left Iran for Berlin, for Germany in 1922, when he was, um, um, he was 20 years old. And then, um, so on the one hand, um, um, the, there are different, um, 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 uh, there are some disputes on how long he stayed in Germany, but between six to eight, probably closer to six than eight uh, years, he has been there and he, he mainly studied um, chemistry. He received a PhD in chemistry, but he also um, was involved with a, a other group of intellectuals. I, I will discuss that a little later. Um, and he wrote in, in two main journals that were published in Berlin, uh, but he also worked with some German orientalists and he also uh, became a faculty member at the uh, Germany's um, School of Oriental um, Languages and, um, and Literature. And he also edited a book by Khayyam and a book by um, uh, Sadi and so on and so forth. So, and he also later, um, when he became a radical, he worked with some um, early uh, radical Iranians and they form a, a, a communist group, um, which we don't have time really to, to discuss those. Anyhow, Arani went back to Iran in 1929 
um, he, um, he had a uh, scholarship from what at the time was called Ministry of War. And um, so he worked uh, until he was arrested, basically. He worked for the Ministry of War, although he was um, head of the education um, branch or department. Um, um, and of course, the, the a very important um, 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 uh, event in, in his life or even in Iran was uh, when Arani and with the help of um, Iskandari and Bozorg Alabi, the novelist, they, um, they established the first radical journal in Iran called Donia. Donia published 12 um, pages. Most of what I will later discuss comes from Donia. Um, unfortunately, this, uh, um, uh, 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 Donia was not able to be published after um, 1935, as I, there, 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 quite a lot of things happened during the, this period. Um, and Aroni was arrested in 1937 with a group that is known as Guru Hefanja Senafar. And um, Aroni was mistreated. He was sick, he wasn't treated, and he died in prison uh, in 1940 after three years. Um, uh, in a way, um, Aroni's, um, uh, one can argue that Aroni's um, uh, useful life was really only um, um, 30, um, 32, three years, but he, when he died, he was, um, there is a little dispute on his uh, date of birth. So I am convinced that it was 1902. Some historians have indicated that he was probably born in uh, 1903, but um, in, in both cases, he died uh, in prison when he was either um, 36 or 37. Uh, shall we go to next um, uh, next uh, slide? So Berlin, um, um, I wasn't able to show my latest version of this um, this presentation. You see some typo here, but um, if you don't mind, I don't get into those because we are running out of time. So. Um, so that it's not 1920, it's 1922 that, that he, uh, he went to, to Berlin. Um, um, basically, at the time when, um, when a 20-year-old um, Arani arrived in Berlin, Berlin was the center of Iranian intellectual political discussion. And... Um, 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 Hassan Tahrizadeh, with the help of German government, gathered some eminent Iranian intellectuals. Tahriz, you see these names, Kazam Zadeh Iran Shah, Mohammad Ghazwini, Ibrahim Pur Dawood, Awai um, Jamal Zadeh, Murtaza Rawandi, uh, so on and so forth. And uh, this is in the context of uh, um, of horrible situation in Iran. Tahrizadeh was a member of Majlis who fled uh, first from Tehran to Kermanshah, then to Istanbul, and then, um, then actually to Berkeley, <laughs> California, and then in New York, and then in New York, Germans contacted him and um, um, they offered some resources and um, and, um, and Tahrizadeh went to Berlin and published Kave and then um, these other two journals that I will discuss later were published. Um, um, so Berlin was very important. This is the Berlin Circle or some people have called them Berlini Hall. Um, shall we go to the next one? No. Okay, so I have to be very careful. 
So I now basically for the rest of this presentation, I want to um, um, uh, briefly discuss um, Arani's writing, but uh, with this slide, I want to provide a, uh, the context. And the context is of the Neo-Ottomans um, effort to basically um, um, at least to, in, to, um, to move an important part of Iran into, um, into what they want to, they imagine would be a future modern Ottoman empire. Um, um, unfortunately, there is no time for me to discuss this and I'm just using a, a very important lecture in Istanbul by, um, by this mysterious person, a half intellectual, half military person, Roshani Beg. Um, uh, but Roshani Beg was not just an intellectual, he was a, a, a military person. He recruited uh, hundreds of people and spent, um, spent um, between eight to, to 12 years um, investigating and creating cells in Iran, um, uh, certainly in the um, Azari part. But their claim for Iran was not just Azerbaijan. Um, 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 since we don't have time for me to go into and discuss this movement, um, as you see here, uh, one of the argument they made was that this whole uh, idea of Iranian civilization, Tamadun Iran, is fake. Is it? Is it Druga Bozok? It's fake. There is no such a thing, and um, and Iranians are basically uh, not even civilized. Uh, they are um, bloodthirsty oppressors. Um, um, they question their Islam because they have this particular ideas about Shiaism, but they went as far as to say at the end of this, um, this um, slide, you see that they say the biggest business of Iranians or Persians, as they call it at the time, is selling of their motherland, Vatan Furushi. Uh, Iran, you have Vatan Furush, they have no Madaniyat, they have no Tamadun, and, um, and of course, uh, he, this lecture was very important. It was given in the most important social club of the elite in, um, in Istanbul. And it is interesting that as far as I know, almost every political intellectual figures in Iran, certainly everyone in Berlin had to respond to these Roshani Beg. Um, because this was happening as the fate of Iran as a sovereign state was questioned and, um, and uh, foreign troops were Iran, including Ottomans. Um, so this is the context. This is the context of some of the discussion I'm about to discuss. Can we move to the next um, um, slide, please? So here, I really cannot go into details because we don't have time, but um, there are two articles that Tari Arani writes, um, both in response to Roshani Beg. Um, so remember, Roshani Beg is, um, is, um, is an Ottoman um, officer intellectual. Um, and, um, and Tari Arani is originally from Tabriz, from Azerbaijan, he's Azari or Turk, as, uh, as it was it, it, it referred to at the time. Um, but but in, in these two articles, one is uh, Zaban Farsi, that was published in um, 1924, when Arani was only 22 years old. Uh, the, the other um, piece he wrote, he wrote it for another Berlin-based um, magazine called um, Farangistan. Um, and that particular uh, article is about Azerbaijan. This one is about 
uh, Persian language. To just be brief, um, Arani uses the same racist, extremely aggressive language in both of these two pieces, defending Iranian nationalism and attacking Turkish <laughs> uh, nationalism, culture, and history. And but mainly, basically, is a name calling that is going on. And he calls Turks also Bahshi. And basically, uh, he argues that the argument that Azaris are Turks is fake. Now, can we go to the next um, slide? Um, you can read this. I'm not going to get into, into them, but, but um, Arani goes so extreme that he basically calls for um, destruction of Turkish language. And um, even if that happens by the force of police and military. Uh, so now, unfortunately, this is another his misunderstanding of history that many um, Iranian historians, historians that I like and respect, have, or they know these two pieces. There were a couple of other pieces that he wrote uh, during this period, but these are the two main pieces. And unfortunately, uh, based on these writings that he wrote when he was basically 22 years old, and in the context of this debate with Roshani Beg and the new Ottomans, and worries about the future of Iran. And, and unfortunately, Arani has been known, has be, is known um, uh, for many people as a extreme racist nationalist. Uh, so one of my goal in this book is to debunk this. Um, can we move to the next um, um, slide? And the next one, this I think I, I sort of discussed. This is the Azerbaijan. And the next one, I don't even want to discuss. Okay. So, um, again, um, 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 Aroni was a, um, was a na nationalist, very chauvinistic idea of Iran. Um, um, at that time, but uh, very quickly, several things happened. Uh, one was that as Arani started more seriously studying chemistry, he had some friends and classmates who were intellectuals and uh, Arani became friends with them. Uh, Arani also uh, became a close associate of, um, of, of, um, Frederick Rosen, Rosen, a very eminent orientalist and a scholar of Iran who in early 20th century published a very important book on Khayyam. Uh, but Rosen was also important politically. Um, Rosen, among other um, European orientalists, was one of those who came up with this whole idea of Iran being part of the Aryan race and sharing certain cultural and, um, and racial um, qualities with Europeans. Um, and when one look at the, um, the Khayyam book, you, uh, Rosen's main argument is that uh, he, he asks this question and, 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 and he asks, why is it that in the entire Arab world and history, there is no such a person like Khayyam? And then his answer, of course, is that it's because Iranians are of Aryan race. The irony or tragedy, whatever you want to call it, is that um, Rosen was, uh, was a Jewish person and, um, um, and in early 20s, he becomes, um, he becomes the foreign ministry of the Germany. Um, and uh, then the anti-Semites, 
those who were for the Aryan race, uh, put pressure on the government, and he becomes subjects of the media, newspapers, and lots of other writings, and he was forced to, um, to resign. And then some of some Orientalists, certainly in this case Rosen, began rethinking the whole idea of Aryan race. And he, and this is actually very important, that, that was very helpful to the Iranian intellectual circles because he began um, um, changing his arguments and um, he comes with a very important um, sort of theory. And that theory is that uh, race did not really play uh, much of an idea in development of Iranian literature. Uh, what Iranian really share is that their shared historical experience. And that was an eye-opening revelation for um, for Arani, again, there is no time for me to go into details, but this is really what the bit was beginning of sort of, I would say, enlightenment for Arani. Of course, Arani also is, was introduced to social democratic ideas and Marxism, and um, actually he visited some um, classes of some very eminent, um, uh, radical um, and science-oriented um, professors there, and, and then became a huge critique of chauvinism and racism and, of course, and fascism. So this is the moment that he, um, he basically uh, publishes Dunia. Um, do I have like five time to, to finish this or do you want? Y yes, you can, you can finish it, please okay. do. Right. So again, I give you the outline. We would be more than happy to, um, to discuss all of this in as much as detail as you have time for it. So Dunia is known for being the first Marxist journal uh, in Iran. In some respect, this is true. But um, uh, so Donia was published for two years. Basically, 12 um, issues were published. Um, 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 when Arani was the uh, editor of the journal. Later, after Arani died, uh, Donia, uh, the Tudor party, party's main theoretical journal became uh, Dunya. And most people actually know that Dunya, and they just um, uh, assume that uh, the Dunya under Arani was the same as Dunya that to the party um, published. But this is not actually the case. Those 12 issues of Dunya basically, um, uh, pu they pu published articles uh, a considerable numbers of the articles in Donia are on sciences and technology, scientific theories, development of new technological innovations, um, on education and on, um, and on social sciences in particular, and on Iranian art, and, um, and um, literature and language. Um, um, again, there is no time for me to go in, into these, but um, the entire project of Donia during this period, the vision, the vision that comes from Arani is to try and to craft a new idea of Iran. That's why I call the book Discovery Iran. To rediscover Iran to, or rethink Iran in the modern context for the future of Iran. And Arani was adamant that um, a society that is based on science, that cares for um, 
um, technological, technological innovations, rational thinking, and, um, um, and also um, obviously um, fairness and democracy. To achieve this, Arani's vision, um, Arani argued that um, we have to have a, um, we have to have a, what I term as a cosmopolitan idea of Iran. Arani never used cosmopolitanism. But for Arani, the term that was very important was Vatandusti. Arani, here, I thought I, we have time, we may not even have time to do this, but there are three pieces that I, I, what I am about to tell you are based on these three pieces, two editorials and one article in the last issue of, uh, of Donia. I think the most important uh, uh, piece of writing by Arani uh, on Persian language. Um, here Arani does two things. One, um, he engages in a detailed critique or criticism of chauvinism, Arianism, nationalist, racial uh, approach to Iranian nationalism, Boston Gerai, so on and so forth on the one hand. And on the other hand, and I would say that he did more work on this area of the, uh, what he called Mortajains, those who um, did not want change, basically. I'm simplifying it. Um, he wrote a three piece, a three, uh, a, a long piece in three issues of Donia on those who argued at the time that the Iranian nation should be defined in um, Sufi's term. Um, so, um, so he engages in a serious critique or discussion of these two extremes. And, but he also argues that Iran needs a center. We have to have, we have to articulate an, a, a, an argument for um, what Iran is, what is I Iran's relationship with its own history. And here he focuses on the relationship between Persian language and Arabic and Iranians and Islams and Arabs and has very, very interesting things to say here. But also on the, on the, on, when it comes to the future of Iran on Persian language and uh, uh, European languages and also um, Iranian culture and values and what he calls um, Western civilizations. He also uh, has some thoughtful discussion of those. And to just um, give you a flavor of what he, uh, what he argues in both cases, he is against the purists who wanted to get uh, rid of all Arabic and Turkish words from, uh, from Farsi, from Persian, and said, we do want to know our history. We, um, we are and we should be critical of our own past, but we should not um, forget or destroy our past. And, um, and um, having connections with others in the past has enriched us and our culture. And, and with the West, he basically says, look, we should not see the Europeans as the ideal paradise. There are problems there too, but we should not mix up uh, critique of the West with rejections of science, social change, democracy, and so on and so forth. But at the center, can we go to the next or maybe even the last um, uh, slide? Let's go to the last one because yes. Um, there are two important um, arguments that he makes when it comes to the idea of Iran or future Iran future as a future nation. One is that why uh, 
in the context of all of the criticism of others he has is that what is it that Iranians share together? Why should Iranians care for their nations and probably even die for it? His argument certainly is that it's not because we are in chosen, we are from great race or that we're great people um, or that we hate these or those other people. His main argument is that we are, we should be, we should approach uh, our vatan, our homeland, a, um, as a materialist, he calls material uh, patriotism. Um, that it says, uh, uh, Donia goes with it. Uh, he basically makes the argument is that um, we have immediate and intimate relationship with our vatan. This is the argument so that I don't go along. That is when people's livelihood is based on a land's territory and water and sun and mines. When that people live in the said land, it harbors material affection for it. And then later he argues is that we receive quite a lot from this land or from our vatan, but we have also responsibility toward it. The responsibility that for Arani obligates us to care for our nation, for muraqibate as vatan. Muraqibate as vatan is the idea of Vatan Dusti. Vatan Dusti, this is a um, care of the nation that is really care of both the environment, the land, everything else that is there, but of course, it's people. Because it, uh, uh, Vatan Dusti is a relationship that a community of nation has with the land that they leave and they benefit from. My, my last ar uh, argument or, or comment is that this is a most fascinating way of articulating the idea of a nation. Um, a nation and, and of course, Vatan Dusti, a uh, relationship between citizens and their nation. This was his last piece of writing. Uh, he wrote this at the time that he was uh, in very early 30s. I have a feeling that if it wasn't for the, uh, um, the government who um, uh, stopped this discussion, of course, Dunya was not published after this, but also Arani was arrested and, and people like, uh, and, and, and it wasn't just irony, by the way, uh, many intellectuals, Dehkhoda, Hidayat, and others, who all sort of started with some kind of racist nationalism, Qasimzadeh um, Iran uh, Shah, for instance, is one. They all, Qasimzadeh Iran Shah stayed, uh, moved from Germany to Switzerland and created a very, really, very interesting global peace movement. If there was some tolerance in Iran, uh, my argument is that the future course of uh, history of Iran, there is at least a good chance or a chance that the future course of Iran would have been uh, marked by ideas like uh, idea of Iran and as Muraqabat al-Vatan and Vatan Dusti in this context, then with what happened uh, later and uh, the situation that we are in at this time. Thank you so much for your patience. Sorry for, for, uh, for going longer than, um, than the time I was um, I given and thank you so much. Thank you, no worries. Uh, we were happy to have you finish up your presentation. Thank you and link everything together. Uh, 
we will go into the Q&A session in just a second uh, for y'all to send those questions in. Please do so in the Q&A section of the Zoom chat or uh, email your questions to media at iran1400.org. While we wait for those questions to come in, we've got a quick teaser to play for y'all. Okay, while we still wait for those quest questions to come in, uh, I'd like to start off with one of my own. And that is the fact that, and you touched on it in your presentation, um, the fact that so many historians choose to focus on Arani's brief flirtation with ethnic nationalism. Why do you think that is? You want me to respond now? Yes. Okay. So. Um... I have two arguments uh, sort of in the book for this. Um, um, I actually in some details discuss three books, but these are three books that somehow acknowledge <laughs> this period. Um, uh, anyhow, it, th these, these are my argument. One is that unfortunately after the um, rise of Islamic Republic and the situation that we have been experiencing in the past four decades, uh, many historians, it sense that are looking for reasons for why what happened um, after the 78 revolution happened. And, um, and, um, and so there is this narrative assumed, and that is that there was extreme nationalism that was anti-Islamic, um, privileged race over everything else. And then those two writings by Arani confirmed that. I'll give you one example. A, a very prominent historian who is also a personal friend of my, mine, a, a eminent historian, Abbas Amanat, just published two, three years ago, uh, his 800-page um, book on history of Iran. And um, he writes about Arani, of course, very briefly. Um, first of all, he argues that Arani was such a blatant nationalist that he changed his name, his last name to Arani and Arani sort of means Irani and Iran comes from Aryan, so on and so forth, which is not true. Uh, Arani's father's last name was also Arani and, and you know, there are explanation for this. And, um, and then of course you use these two writings when he wrote, when, he, when Arani was 20, 20 years old. Um, um, and this is unfortunate, I do mention this. But actually a, another prominent historian who actually comes from the left, Yervan Abraham Young, also does the same thing. The reason I think here is this, is I think is something that I mentioned in my presentation. And that is that because they do not recognize this interval as a distinct period, this period, for instance, 2022, um, uh, 1922, 1923, this, this is when Arani was a nationalist. For, for, for some historian, this is the beginning of Reza Shah. And, and in fact, what 
Aroni writes, it's something that came out of pro Reza Shah Fox. What I don't understand is that if you really want to understand anyone, do you go and read something that somebody writes when this, this man, in, in the case of Aroni, was 22 years old? And when he has written so much after, my feeling is that they sort of know what he has written after. But you cannot dismiss this period and then go and write Aroni's criticism of Arianism because it doesn't work. That's why I think it's important, um, and I do hope, at least try to do in my book, to say this is a particularly um, uh, important part. It does start with this extreme nationalism, but it doesn't end that way. Great, thank you so much for that elaborate response. Um, and I, I did read what you wrote in the book about that as well. And you, you touched on that point perfectly. Uh, our next question is from John Limbert and you've already touched on some of this, but perhaps you could elaborate more. Uh, the question is, well, thank you for an excellent presentation. Is there a story behind Arani's family name, which is a reference to ancient Azerbaijan? Yes, well, um, 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 of course, well, what I haven't actually discussed uh, in this discussion is that um, um, a number of issues that are controversial, I just presented them as if there is no um, um, dispute about that. Um, um, of course, there is the an area and a river of Iran that is in, um, in, um, in uh, now in what we call Republic of Azerbaijan. And for this reason that the dispute is that, is it Arani or Arani? Uh, if you wanna be con uh, historically consistent, this is probably, uh, we should say Arani, um, but that's another, another issue. I have checked with, um, with Agai um, uh, Jalali, who has written a book about Arani and has, um, has studied in, um, in, in German um, archives. And uh, he has documentation that shows that Arani's father's name was Arani. And it is true that um, this family, they come from, um, from um, um, from what today we call uh, we call Republic of Azerbaijan, and that's what that's that explained the last name. Um, um, uh, the, the the idea that the that area at the river Iran comes from Arianism is very controversial. I. I'm not convinced that there is a relationship or not, but I'm not also a scholar, uh, a scholar of, of um, ancient Iran to, to, to make any statement. Thank you so much for that answer, Dr. Mirsipasi. Uh, pleasant surprise, we actually have Dr. Abrahamian. He's in the audience today. And yeah. um, we have him here with us. Uh, Dr. Abrahamian, if you'd like to to uh, respond, or if you have any questions, please go ahead. Yes, could you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Good. Uh, yes, I, I mean, my interpretation of Arani is not very different from Ali, but somehow Ali, in reading my interpretation, must have one paragraph where I talk about Arani's uh, chauvinism. He, this must have turned him off so much because he didn't read the next few chapters, a few paragraphs, because I argue very much that he gave up these chauvinistic ideas 
um, actually while he was in Germany, later years in Germany, and that his, what we know as irony is very different. It's from Donia and from Mar about Marxism, not the earlier two articles he wrote about chauvinism. Um, so I think he's being somewhat selective in which paragraphs he takes from my book about uh, Iran's uh, uh, view of Iran. Thank you, Dr. Abrahamian. Do you have uh, anything you'd like to say in response, Dr. Mirsapasi? Sure, briefly. Of course, uh, Professor Abrahamian is my mentor and teacher, and, uh, and I always uh, take his advice. But I have to say, honestly, that no, I have actually read um, uh, the other arguments you have. But to be precise, um, my argument is that, um, and this you can tell me if I'm right on this or not, that actually Arani wrote a number of pieces on Persian language and Iranian nationalism in Donia. I, as far as I remember, you do say what you just said about Arani changed his mind, but you, but from my perspective, what is important about Arani actually is not even his Marxism, uh, but his arguments on Iranian nationalism and, and those pieces were published in Donia. And as far as I can remember, you don't mention those. In other words, to be precise, my argument is not that um, that you um, you were not aware of this change. Um, I would say this about Professor Amanat because I don't remember he saying things. Although he also said that he was also a Marxist and a communist. But but you do what I'm wondering or curious about is that why is it that you don't mention his later writings on nationalism, not on Marxism or other ideas that he had. And of course, uh, in a, the editorial for, uh, uh, for, for Donia, he specifically wrote and said, I was young and stupid to write those things. And I'm sure that you, you, you must have read this. These are just 12 issues of, of, of Donia. But um, um, so that's my explanation, but I will go and look at your work and correct myself if I'm wrong. Oh, yes, I mean, I, I think you're right that in my summary of uh, Arani's work, I stress the historical materialism, not so much his writings on uh, Vatan Dus. Uh, but I, the reason for that was, I think, the reason Donia was so popular or so, so, so subversive at that time and people read it was much more because of historical materialism. So that was what was attracting it. And that's why the, the, I, the journal was closed down rather than his writings on uh, patriotism. Well, may I make a brief comment? Go ahead. You are, Yerwan, you are absolutely right. Um, you know, we all want to make an argument and sometimes at the expense of not, I think I do say this in the book, but I have to say that more than politics or even Marxism or the communist movement in the world, Donia's approach and, uh, and materials they published obsessively focused on what Arani calls um, materialist approach. And in fact, um, there wasn't time, and I'm sure I didn't do a good presentation of this. His discussion of nationalism is part of his historical materialist approach. Uh, he has actually a very interesting discussion about Shahnameh Ferdowsi from that perspective. So Professor Abraham Yan is right. Uh, the, the, the journal's emphasis is um, is, um, is historical materials. Fantastic. Thank, thanks, y'all. Thank you, Dr. Abrahamian, for uh, speaking on such short notice. Uh, this is exactly what the Iran 1400 Project aspires to do, to create 
constructive dialogue uh, between those who have spent their lives studying Iran. It's just an incredible contribution. Thank y'all. Uh, if we continue on to the next question, we have one from uh, Sarah Zavori. And uh, Sarah wanted to know, and I can put this up uh, as I ask this question, uh, one of the, the pictures in your slide is... Uh, I, I will pull that up on the screen in just a second. Uh, she would like to know who it is that is um, in the picture. One second. So that the picture you had of the women in Berlin. Here we go. Now I have it. Um, she wanted to know specifically who was in the picture. So I'll share that right now. Can you all see that? Yes, um, I myself have been wondering, about, I think there are two women. Um, um, to be honest with you, I don't specifically know, but my guess is that uh, Muhammad Qazwini and Jamal Zadeh for sure, um, were in Berlin with their wives. Um, I believe um, Azvini's wife was a British or German woman. Uh, the picture is not that clear for us to say. And the origin of this picture, I have checked. It doesn't, all I know is the, the last, the first person from left is Arani. Um, I assume that um, the third person on left is Qazvini. If that is true, um, one of the two women are um, Qazvini's wife. Uh, so this is one explanation. The other explanation I can give is that I have extensively studied people that Arani worked with, and of course, there are uh, some studies of Berlin, the intellectuals, Berlini Halls, and there is no uh, name of any, um, any female um, collaborators or uh, writers. There are some writers who wrote for um, uh, Iran Shah, um, uh, when Iran Shah was based in, in Berlin, but they uh, they were based in 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 Iran, in Tehran. Great, thank you. Let me stop my screen. Okay, our next question is from Dr. Turaj Atabaki, uh, and he asked, or he said, first, congratulations, uh, Dr. Mirsapasi, for your new book. Uh, my question is about the communist uh, Arani. And the question is, to what extent do you think Arani was influenced by the idea of Tat Tatar Bolshevik uh, Sultan Gal Galiev's national communism? We know that Arani was familiar with the debates in the common turn of the mid 1920s. Okay. Um, a great question. And um, 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 Dr. Atabaki, another friend and a, a prominent historian of 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 the uh, the the period and the uh, particular geographical areas. Um, I haven't done any um, any study of national communism myself. Um, so I, I don't want to make any comment on that area. But what I can say, well, I, I can say two things. Th these may actually clarify a couple of things about this book. One is that I have decided, and I can be criticized for that, after really <laughs> studying and reading so much literature, and um, early on talking to Khosru Shakari before, um, um, early on, that um, the, 
Tagliaroni's Marxism, his writings and everything are so controversial is almost impossible to know what is what he wrote or what he didn't wrote, where he went or not, didn't go. First of all, all of this has been studied extensively and I did not feel that I can contribute anything. So in this book, I am only focusing on, on his writings that he signed and we know. And on this whole idea of Persian language and literature, this is the argument actually I didn't make, but this is his argument that, that the center of a, a, from my perspective, cosmopolitan modern Iran would be this particular approach to Persian language. Um, um, based on my own study, uh, I actually think that, and this may be surprising, I'm sure that I will be criticized, but that may produce some productive discussion. Arani was more influenced by the Orientalists than the communists. Uh, it is amazing how much work he did on classic Persian literature. He was, for instance, he was in close contact with Frederick Rosen. Even when he was publishing Don Yan, he was in Tehran. And um, 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 uh, remember that Aroni actually studied Arabic and 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 Fiqh and Islam and he has he also writes about um, um, about Islam and Shiism, and he was also in this regard influenced by Iran Shah. Now, I have to be careful because these are areas that I have studied, but I really have not studied this relationship. I know that he at least the rumors, and it's probably some of it is true that he attended Comintern or some. Some, some international communist um, meetings. He visited Moscow. Um, I don't trust myself on those areas, but as far as I can tell that his, Aroni's engagement with classic Persian literature is very, very serious. Um, and I think that influence is, is much more. He also worked with other Orientalists. It wasn't just Rosen, although Rosen was probably the most important one. Great, thank you very much. Uh, ah, in line with that, we have another question that asks, as a Marxist, how did he relate the idea of Vatan, i.e. nationalism, with that of internationalism during the rise of and in relation with the Soviet Union? A great question. Um, of course, some of, <laughs> I'm a little reluctant because I have to just um, um, interpret um, um, Arani's writings. Arani, Arani's writings that we know, or I know that these are his writings, um, uh, does not, well, let me say this. Uh, for many of you who are historians of Iran and have read Arani's writings, um, uh, this may look redundant, but for those who may know later Marxists in Iran, Arani's writings is not, Arani doesn't write like the Marxists that we, later um, um, uh, known and have read. Um, you rarely um, 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 see even word Marx or Marxism um, in his writings. Materialism, sometimes dialectical materialism, historical materialism, uh, you can see. But mainly the way Aroni writes is a I would say is a social scientific way that he writes. And with lots of emphasis on science, um, uh, sciences. Now, what I can say in response specifically to this question is that there are a number of places that he talks about 
relationship with, uh, between Iran and, and the West, um, or sometimes you call it Tamadun Bar. Arani believed that there is something universal that he usually called it Tarakiyat Elmi Dunya. And he insists that we should not confuse this with a particular geographical area, or we should not see it uh, in relationship to our own culture. He feels that there is something that I use the term cosmopolitan that belongs to the humanity and everyone in the humanity should embrace, including Iranians, right? On the other hand, he is very critical of, um, um, of um, so say uh, people like Tarizadeh and others who, um, who, um, who felt that there was no use to, um, to be attached to any historical um, um, Iranian sense of value um, and we should just give everything up and perhaps adopt the, um, the Western ways. He always, he's always very careful. He says, if by Europe you mean uh, European science and technology, we have to adopt it. But then he goes, as Yervon said, and said, there is a material explanation for why Europeans have made progress we have not. But he always also say that our critique of our past, culture, literature, there, there are some really interesting discussion he has about Saadi um, has to also adopt this historical materialism. That there is a reason why Ferdowsi wrote Shahnameh. Um, so in all of this, he critiqued those who think that, oh, read Shahnameh and create Iran. Uh, it's a model. It's like, this is a stupid. There was a reason, a particular context, why Shahnama was written, um, and we, our attitude should be critical, but we should not dismiss them. Um, um, uh, the other point I have to say is that um, um, the, the sort of Soviet Marxism is a post-Arani um, uh, phenomenon. One argument I can make, and I'm sure that others um, here can, can correct me if I'm wrong on this, is that Aroni was influenced by some earlier Marxists who came from the European tradition of Marxism. And um, for instance, even Aroni's students like Khalil Maliki, um, even if you read um, Bozorg Alavi's um, uh, novels um, uh, a little early on, even into the 40s, um, 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 Eskandari and others, uh, during this time period, um, their approach to Marxism is mainly, on the one hand, a, a sort of European Marxism. On the other hand, really, I, I'm almost convinced that Aroni's interest in, in communism or Marxism, sorry, was mainly came from his interest in sciences. Great, thank you for that elaborate answer. Uh, I think we're, I think that's it for the questions from the q and I have one more that I'd like to ask sure. uh, and this will be the one that we'll end on if that's okay with you. Uh, the question is, what points and arguments uh, did Arani make that you think are the most relevant today? And do you believe that their relevancy is exclusive to Iranians or are they lessons that any person could learn from? Okay, um, I really wanna be brief, although your question is a wonderful question 
that um, if you had asked me early on, I would have spent 10 minutes on, on this. Um, I think there is a section of my book that tries to respond to that. So my main argument is that Arani's argument about this whole care of the nation or however you want to interpret it, is um, situating Iran on the one hand in relationship to Islam and Persian language to Arabic and lesser degree to Turkish, and then Europe and science. And he's adamant, insistent on social scientific approach to building of a modern era. For instance, his critique of Erfan. His um, radical critique of anti-modernist trends in Iran. He is also very good because he knew Arabic. He also read, and actually he was very much involved in, in, in classic Persian uh, literature. Um, um, I'll give you one example. Uh, he wrote the first, the first critique of Henry Bergson. Henry Bergson, who um, first Iqbal Lahuri, if I want to give you a brief um, um, history of this, and later Shariati, and, and many others, Ahmad Fadid, and, 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 and all anti modernists in Iran. Uh, championed and translated, um, uh, Aroni was the first person who realized that this is a danger, that we can, in this intuitive El Mehuzuri, El Mehuzuri. Um, um, so he was critical of this particular anti modernist trend, but he offered, he produced something positive to hold on. And this is the idea of muraqabat al-watan. This is something that certainly Marxists later didn't have, right? Or they had some abstract ideas, but also others. Um, you know, uh, to just say that let's go to Iran, Boston, or um, uh, certainly Second Pahlavi totally confused this. Uh, some of this, some of that uh, would not work. So my argument is that um, that um, what he offered positively, how one as a, to, to use today's term, a secular scientifically minded people who won a good, or a good society for future of Iran, what is it that we have to hold on? And, and I think this Muraqabat al-Watan idea is the one, and I think this is actually universal in a way that it, his, any, any community should care for their, uh, their environment and, and where they live and, and, and people who they live with. Um, it's a fabulous way of approaching nationalism. Uh, so that's what I would say. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. I think that's a wonderful note to end the event on. Thank you again for your time today and your fascinating presentation and answers. Um, to the audience, if you all enjoyed today's discussion, please do check out the book. Uh, it is titled The Discovery of Iran, Tagi Arani, A Radical Cosmopolitan. It's published with uh, Stanford University Press. Uh, if you enjoyed the event, we do have another one next Friday coming up, uh, April 15th, with uh, Ali Fatola Najat uh, on his new book, Iran in an Emerging New World Order, from Ahmadinejad to Rouhani. Uh, additionally, if you're new here, you can find our website at iran1400.org. There, we have articles published both in English and in Farsi about a variety of content specifically about ideas and institutions in the last 100 years in Iran. Uh, and the, these will be subjects such as the women's movement, fine arts, education, identity, modernity. And uh, we have those through articles, videos, podcasts, and events like the one that y'all saw today. Uh, if you scroll to the bottom of our website, 
you can sign up uh, to receive our newsletter, which will alert you of uh, new content and upcoming events. And you can find us on all the social media platforms at Iran 1400. Uh, I'm sorry, at Iran 1400 Project. Lastly, uh, if you find if you found today's event interesting, I wanted to mention the specific content that we have on our website that's related to what we talked about today. Uh, we have in we have an article called The Image and Reality of Iran's 100-Year-Old Approach to Modernity by Dr. Aram Hassami. Um, we also have uh, a similar a similar article in video form, which is by uh, Dr. Ramin Jahan Beglu on our YouTube page. And to give a shout out to myself, uh, we have an article titled Molding the Language of Nationalism in Three Recent Periods in Iran by yours truly, uh, Sydney Martin. And y'all can find those on our website and you can find the first two, their YouTube videos and they're on our website. And again, thank you to Dr. Mir Sepasi. Thanks again to the audience for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the event. Okay, thank you so much. Thanks. Um,